In the last video, we looked at WeFunder in terms of fees and deal flow and other important aspects. Today, we're going to actually jump into the platform, give a quick demo and walkthrough, and show you where you can find everything you need to find as an investor or a startup that's using it. Okay, and with that, let's jump in and actually take a look at the WeFunder portal. So we're going to head over to WeFunder.com. And as you can see, this is just the welcome kind of homepage, invest in startups you love, these little scrolling banners, invest in your local community, hard moonshot. So you can kind of get an idea, you know, trying to get you to click the link to create an account. Here's some of the companies that are currently raising. Uh, I'll be going over that in a little bit more detail. And don't forget, you can always click load more if you wanted to see more. And then there's just some general information as well as completed startups who have actually successfully raised company. Note that you will see a mix of both Reg CF, Reg D, and Reg A plus here. So Zenefits, for example, was one of those Reg D deals from uh, back in the earlier 2010s. So when we go down to the bottom, uh, you can see there's over 316,000 investors so far. They've funded 320 startups and 114 million. So definitely impressive numbers. Pretty much number one, as we mentioned, in terms of the capital raise so far. So when you create a new account, you'll, you can either create it here or sign in. I'm going to sign in using Facebook. So I'm going to go ahead and log in here. All right, now once you're logged in, it's gonna take you to your kind of homepage. And this is basically your news feed for any of the companies that you follow, that you invest in, that sort of thing. So all these companies here, I've either invested in or I followed. And so I get updates from them, whether it's the founders kind of posting on it. You can go and click on anything here and then look at the updates. It'll have investor only updates as well. This one is more of a general update, but you can basically click anything here. Uh, now an important thing, and this is one of those things that I mentioned where sometimes the navigation can just be a little, hard to find or you have to get used to but this little button over here menu uh, so you click that and this pops out and now you can sort your news feed by a bunch of these different things so I could look at just my investments for example I could look at ones that are raising now that I'm following and that's going to show only updates from those uh, as well as funds I'll be talking briefly about funds and then the actual companies that I've invested in so you can see uh, the companies I've invested in here and companies I'm also following so this is your basic news feed page. That's why it brings you to the news tab. The one of most interest for investors is gonna be heading on over to the explore page. So if we click on explore, it's gonna bring us to the page where all the startups who are currently raising capital are listed. Now you can sort by any of these, as I mentioned, uh, you know, if we want to look at Y Combinator companies, you can see there's two YC companies currently raising and 79 that have been funded in the past. Uh, but in addition to that, you could, if I wanna sort by everything and then you sort it by trending, newest, closing, soon, most funded. You can use any of these different things and it'll basically sort it to help you try and narrow down your search. So let's sort by newest and take a look at some of the new deals. Here, uh, first you'll notice there's this heart. So that lets you basically remind you, um, which adds it to your following list and then you'll get updates in your news feed. So you can either click on that uh, or if you're interested in taking a look in one of them, let's actually click on one and then you can take a look. So back to space, let's check this one out. Now you can notice this one's still in the pre-launch phase. So usually they give a certain time for the friends and family to invest. And then after that pre-launch, it'll be open to the general public. Uh, but this is what a typical offering page looks like. So at the top, you're gonna have your offering video. Uh, there's links to the website. There's little links to share over here, as well as again, that button to follow them or unfollow them. Uh, now here's one of the key parts that investors are gonna be interested in. This is where the first of your deal terms are gonna come in. So here we can see that it's uh, buying stock in five point six million pre-money valuation so you can read a little bit about it if it was a safe a simple agreement for future equity or whatever the security is it'll t tell you more about it right here uh, you can also click more and I recommend always clicking that so you can see a little more detail okay so it's $25 per share and if you want pro rata rights it's a 25k threshold that's essentially for traditional angels right who would want to do follow on and be able to invest in follow on rounds so that's not going to apply to most crowdfunding investors unless you're investing 25k checks in each one which I am not uh, as a non-accredited investor but in addition to that click this little button so this is going to show you the perks and here you can see that for $500 you'll get something for a thousand there's another level of reward and perk, 5,000 plus dollars, something else. So this is similar to the Kickstarter model, right? Where different thresholds trying to incentivize you to invest a little bit more. Now going down to the actual offering page itself, uh, on the main page, this is all about them. So it's always important to read the highlights at the top for sure. It kind of has some of the highlights that they chose to highlight of why you might want to invest. 
You can read about the team as well as existing investors. Uh, and then it actually gets into their pitch. So this is where the meat of most of the pitches is gonna be. They'll tell their story often in graphs and showing numbers. Uh, do they have any traction? Uh, what are their growth numbers looking like? A little bit about their team. So it's always great to read through all of that. Now at the bottom of each of the campaigns on the WeFunder page is investor Q&A. And so this is just quick little kind of FAQs where you can explain, uh, excuse me, expand out and then read some of their responses to some of these questions that investors would typically want to be asking. Also at the bottom, uh, you're going to get into a financials page. Now, again, most of these companies are going to be very early stage. Uh, so you're going to see big numbers, you know, net loss of, from January to December of last year of minus 670K on 118K revenue. Uh, so you can look at all this, but there's awesome charts to be able to look at that explains it. Obviously, you need to read more into this, though. You can't just look at the numbers, right, for such an early stage company. So that's where this important tab of narrative comes in. Make sure you read that because that's where the founder actually talks talks about their numbers, why they are what they are, how they expect them to be in the coming year, that sort of thing. So moving on, and again, there's a quick little navigation here. So this kind of shows what we're going through, the overview, the story, the investor Q&A, the financials. Next up is we're moving on to the risks. So if you look at the risks here, it's going to talk about basically you can expand it out, but uh, both being all the risks of an early stage company as well as specific risks. You know, this is someone uh, who's working with STEM oriented kind of programs and traditional media, that sort of thing. So any specific risks are going to be denoted here in this section. So that's a good thing to read and become familiar with as a potential investor. And then last but not least, you actually get into the details. So this is who are the board of directors, uh, officers, voting power, past raises, as well as outstanding debts. Uh, here you'll see any related party transactions. So you'll notice kind of relationships. So this is a 15,000 loan, it says the entity that issued the loan is run by the company's advisor and fractional CFO. So that'll show you any related party transactions, uh, and then use of funds. This is a very important section to read. So this is, if they're successful at the different thresholds shown here on the left, what is the company gonna do? So here they're gonna use you know, 67.5% towards digital platform, X percent will be towards fees, and so on and so on. And then last but not least is a link to the Form C. This has to be on every offering page. So if you click on that, it's gonna bring you to the actual Form C filing where you can read everything that you want in terms of the offering, and this is the Form C that actually gets filed with the SEC, so make sure you read through that. Okay, so that's kind of the offering page, but there's a few other things of interest that we actually didn't get to. So first are updates. So if you come back to the top here, you'll notice this little tab and make sure you don't miss this because there's some really important things here. First, the updates tab. There's no updates yet. This is a new company, but typically there'll be updates from founders posted here uh, as well as grapevine. So this is notes from investors, but also they can have basically curated kind of notes from companies or media or more notable investors, as well as whatever any investor who invests on WeFunder wants to say about them uh, so they can kind of just write a little one-liner you know I'm inspired and this I invested for this reason now one of the most important things that I use is the ask a questions let's go find another campaign that has some more questions so we can show this a little bit better so I'm going to go back to the we funder offering page I'm going to click on explore all right so instead of newest let's sort by closing soon so these will be much more mature campaigns Let's go to Convizio. As a disclaimer, so this is, I just chose this randomly, but uh, you can see I have invested in this company in the past. So they've actually already raised $1 million. So it's pretty much sold out. They're on waiting list now, but they're gonna be closing soon. So let's go back real quick. So as I was showing before, um, Grapevine, anyone who's invested, and you can see there's a lot more people here in the Grapevine, you can put a little note, but the most important thing is ask a question. So this lets you as an investor uh, ask any question, you know, I'm ask a question of the founder, and you could hit post and then that's gonna get posted and then the founder responds to you. Uh, if you have a financial relationship, so if you're an investor or anything else, you wanna make sure you click this disclosure. But here you can see all the Q&A. And I think this is one of the most important parts of every funding portal and of equity crowdfunding because essentially you can see here, let's assume there's uh, 61, but that's potentially you know 61 questions from all these different people who have different diverse backgrounds, expertise, and they're asking the founders about their business in so many different ways. So they'll get sometimes really down into the weeds of the numbers, uh, as well as asking about, you know, projected growth or risks or concerns that they have that maybe weren't answered on the campaign page. So make sure you go through all these questions. The Q&A is obvious. 
is honestly, in my opinion, one of the most valuable parts uh, of all of these pages, but that's that. Now, in terms of financial securities on WeFunder, you're mostly gonna find a kind of mix of equity as well as future equity agreements. So this says future equity agreement, which is a safe, a simple agreement for future equity. Now, often safes will have either valuation caps or discount rates. So you can see here that this one comes with a 5.5 million valuation cap. That means that in the event that they raise a future round uh, at a priced round or have a triggering event, then whatever that priced round is, you will convert at a 5.5 equivalent valuation. So if it's at $10 million and you have the 5.5 million cap, you're gonna get more shares than you would have had you invested in that round at the $10 million valuation. Make sure you read Always Click More uh, because, again, you can see you also get the 10% discount rate on this 5.5 cap. There is the pro rata right threshold. Uh, but in addition to that, WeFunder has been doing more of these called MFI, Most Favored Investor Safes. So I want to show you a quick example of that. Now, what I'm interested in showing you here is at the bottom, you can see each of the security types. So this is stock at a pre-money valuation, uh, future equity, so that's a safe. But the one I'm interested in showing you is if it says either a zero million valuation cap or future equity without mentioning a valuation cap. So for example, let's take a look at this, lifetimes. So it just says future equity agreement. Now, the security is up to the founder and the company in terms of what they do. So I'll first note here, right, we mentioned early bird terms. This is an example where it shows how much early bird terms are. So in this one, it's up to $50,000. So far, they've only raised 10K. Uh, the first 50,000 gets better terms. So let's see what that means. So let's come down here. You can see it's a future equity agreement. Click see more. So this is a future equity agreement, a safe with most favored investor clause. This is something I'm seeing more on WeFunder. I haven't seen it other places, but people have either very strong opinions in terms of essentially what it is, is an uncapped value safe. This means that if any future investor gets a better deal, your contract will just match them. It's helpful in that it kind of kicks the valuation can down the road and you don't have to worry about pricing it out and seeing if it's a good value now. But a potential downside, right, is that you're investing earlier than some of those future investors. And so some investors think that you should be compensated for the additional risk you're taking on. So as a quick example, let's assume I wanted to read more about the deal terms, right? So here's another one, future equity agreement. It's a safe, uh, no valuation cap. It has most favored nation, which is similar to that most favored investor clause. How do you actually see the deal terms? This is one of the things that took me a little bit to figure out. Uh, but the way you're going to do it, if you want to read those deal terms, you have to actually click to invest, and then you can actually see what that contract looks like. So let's assume I was just going to pretend to commit $250 here, which is the minimum in this case. When it brings you to this final screen here, uh, first off, you'll notice the total here is because it's a safe, it's actually the full value of my investment plus the fee. Whereas if it was stocks, it might be the minimum amount that I can purchase with that and then the fee up to the amount that I put. So just understand how that works. So you can see it's a safe. If I click that one, it's just gonna bring you to the WeFunder page, but down here under contracts, this is where if you want to actually look at their official form C filed with the SEC or what that contract would look like for this MFN safe, you can click it there. You can see now that it's gonna pull it up. Uh, it should have your investment amount, but this is where it's gonna talk about you know, different events like liquidity events, uh, repurchase rights. This is very important to understand for investors and we'll do some future videos on this, but make sure you're reading that. And that's where you find the actual contract. Uh, so make sure you read through this because as you can see here, this is that MFN provision. That's where you can find the actual contract if you look before you invest. So make sure you check that out. So we've covered a lot in WeFunder today. Uh, as you can see, I got to cancel these incomplete ones that I was just doing as an example. Uh, but in the top right, this is also where you can go. I want to give a very quick overview of this. So you can look at your profile. This is where you can basically put investor information about yourself. It shows what you've invested in, um, the funds that you're following, and then you can get shout outs from founders that you support as well as Karma, edit your profile, all of that here. And then if you go to my investments, this is another place where it actually shows you all of your investments, either the ones that are in escrow. So this means it hasn't been closed out yet, but I committed to that uh, or the ones that are confirmed. And then this is where you can get your contracts. So if I wanted to take a look at this, uh, it tells me when I invested, it would say how much I invested, and then you can hit contracts and that's gonna give you your actual contract, that subscription agreement. So it just has to prepare it and then it'll let you download it. Boom, there it is. Last but not least, if you were a startup, you would be clicking to raise money here, and then you can get updates by clicking this and then seeing updates from the companies that you follow or the ones you've invested in. So that wraps up our WeFunder platform walkthrough. 
Again, to download the Crowdwise Funding Portal Comparison Chart, head over to crowdwise.org portals, and then make sure you check out the rest of the videos in this playlist, where we're going to be reviewing and doing a walkthrough of each of the top crowdfunding portals, all the way from WeFunder, StartEngine, SeedInvest, Republic, NetCapital, NextSeed, MicroVentures, and TrueCrowd.